DC 101, the Grease Man here. Let's check the mailbag, shall we? Letters. We get letters. And I'm getting too many letters from people saying, what, uh, dear Grease, what does uh, Clinton uh, think about your all-new marital status? How ridiculous. Uh, let me tell you something. Once and for all, Clint Eastwood uh, probably doesn't even, doesn't even know that I'm alive. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, even if he did know that I'm alive, uh, the thought of me marrying him, uh, you see, because he's got his own woman. Clint Eastwood is not funny. I am not funny. It is no important. Uh, what my marital status is. Uh, he and I could never possibly uh, be interested in each other in that way. But if I got a knock on the head. I dreamt it. I had to break the news to him. He'd been out of town at a policeman's convention in Atlanta and when I decided to wed and so... When he came back, I figured I'd break the news to him gently and sing for him maybe one last time in my tutu. It had to be you. It had to be you. No other guy could make me so high. It had to be you. Oh, how I feel. Stars above, it's just unreal. It just had to be you for all of the road. Oh, so nice. Would you cut a slice? It had to be you. Yes, you are my favorite muffin. You're the one who taught me about Gerald Stephan. It had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. One, two, Totally illegal. Totally. Violates every principle of America. You're leaving me, punk. Oh, look at it. I mean, we can always be friends. You know, I still care what happens to you. You know, I'll call every now and then, but we can't be active anymore. <laughs> so anyway, you can keep the stereo if you want. I got a better one at home. You can have the dishes. Keep that Mel Mac. You got fine china now. Sweet thing, Russ. I don't want to hear about her, pug. Well, you'd be interested. I mean, if you found a new love, I'd... remember the time you had that affair with Ernest Borgnine? I kid. I wonder what he was like. I mean, did he sweat much? I asked you all these questions. Just get out, pug. And I get to keep the trouble. Wet, warm, wet. Uh, I've developed uh, an affection for that gerbil. And not only that, I'm the one that trained him. Remember, at first we couldn't get diddly squat out of him. Now he's very eager. And uh, besides, he likes me better. No, he likes me better, punk. All right, well, let's, let's let the gerbil decide where he wants to go. That's what happens in these kind of cases, right? People have children. Oftentimes the children are asked their input into where they want to end up, and the, the gerbil is kind of our child. All right, Clinton, drop trial. We'll both drop trial. Flip over in the reverse somersault position. Hold it right there. That's it. Uh, stay poised right there. All right. Now, let me reach around here and with my toe, open his cage. And we'll see to whom he goes first. Fair enough, Bob. Come here, girl. Come here, Turtle. Break your neck. That's great. You're really going to encourage him to come to you with that. Come on, hon. Come on. Come here. Come here. There you go. Whoa! No fair, punk. You lured him. Of course I lured him. All fair in love and war and troubles. Well, there. Let me uh, breathe deep. All right. He's firmly seated. All right, Clinton. I got my bags packed. They're already out of my car. You take care. And, uh, you know, send me a card every now and then. Could you hand me the newspaper on the way out? It's on the doorstep. Sure, no problem. Glad you have no hard feelings about all this. Let me see what's down here on the newspaper. Look at this. Hey, they're finally going to execute Ted Bundy. You saw New York! 